वेरी गुड आफ्टरनून स्टूडेंट्स गुड आफ्टरनून से गुड आफ्टरनून ऑल ऑफ यू सो लेट अस स्टार्ट द डिस्कशन विदाउट वेस्टिंग एनी टाइम so last class if you remember we have discussed about biomolecules and all now we are going to start with the discussion of a proteins what are proteins what are their structures then vitamins nucleic acids and all so if we go with the proteins proteins are composed of many polypeptide chains polypeptide poly means there are many peptide linkages in that particular new in that particular polymer chain a polypeptide chain is a linear polymer of alpha amino acids whatever the amino acids you have those amino acids are going to be linked with each other the amino acids are going to be linked with each other in the amino acid whatever the coh group we have that will be reacting with the nh2 from the other amino acid and you will get an amide linkage peptide linkage is actually an amide linkage proteins are composed of many polypeptide chains a polypeptide chain is a linear polymer of alpha amino acid the compounds which contain amino nh2 and carboxylic acid coh functional groups are called amino acids is my audio clear to everyone yes sir arpita please join again okay the compounds which contain amino group and carboxylic acid functional groups they are said to be amino acids like the general structure of amino acid will be like the carbon to the carbon you have nh2 and a coh group connected c double bond oh and to this carbon one alkyl group might be connected this r group and also one hydrogen these are said to be on the alpha carbon with respect to coh we have nh2 this is said to be alpha amino acids the compounds which contain amino group and carboxylic acid functional groups are said to be alpha amino acid with respect to coh on the alpha carbon you have nh2 group that is by the name alpha amino acids ch or nh2 coh is an alpha amino acid there are actually 20 amino acids available alpha amino acids if you look at the classification there are classified into acidic amino acids as well as basic amino acids and we also have neutral amino acids so amino acids there are 20 amino acids available out of these 20 amino acids some are acidic some are basic some are neutral which amino acids are going to be acidic like i have told you the general structure is co yeah very good coh cr ch and nh2 in this alkyl group if you have an acidic group then more number of acidic group lead to acidic amino acid in this alkyl group if you have basic groups then that will be basic amino acid if this alkyl group do not have acidic or basic group then that is neutral amino acid so acidic basic as well as neutral amino acids so you try to remember the amino acids with respect to this category okay there are diff different different categories you try to remember with respect to this category acidic amino acids number of acidic groups are greater when compared to number of basic groups in that category we have aspartic acid like nh2ch in the r group we have ch2coh so this is nothing but your alkyl group r group glutamic acid nh2ch coh ch2ch2coh this is the alkyl group so these are nothing but your acidic amino acids where the number of acidic groups are great when compared to the number of basic groups if you look at the basic amino acids basic amino acids again classified based on the category number of basic groups are greater when compared to number of acidic groups number of basic groups are greater like if you look at this arginine nh2chcoh but the alkyl group will be having basic groups nh lone pair of electrons and nitrogen are present they will be attacking the h plus ion and thus they are going to act as respect to bases lysine nh2chcoh this is again the alkyl group or ch2ch2ch2ch2nh2 histidine nh2 chcoh ch2 and this bulky group are yes or no ch2 and this other group are so wherever you have more number of basic groups when compared to acidic groups in that category you will be having the respect to basic amino acids basic amino acids means number of basic groups greater number of acidic groups 
Acidic amino acids means number of acidic groups are greater when compared to the number of basic groups. Neutral amino acids are those where the number of acidic and basic groups they are equal. Equal. Right? Very good. Neutral means number of acidic groups is equal to number of basic groups. You have glycine in that category, NH2, CH2, COH. Here, the alkyl group is just hydrogen. Alanine, NH2, CH, CH3, COH. Proline, proline. In the proline, you have what type of NH group? It is a proline will have secondary amine. Okay. In the proline, in the alpha amino acid named proline, we will be having a secondary amine, whereas in other, we are going to have respect to primary amines. NH2 groups are there. Like only one NH and one COH, number of acidic and number of basic groups are same. So it is going to be again respect to neutral amino acids. Valine, leucine, phenylalanine. Look at the alkyl groups. These are the respect to alkyl groups. In the valine, you have CH, CH3, CH, CH3. Leucine, CH2, CH, CH3, CH, CH3. Phenylalanine, CH2, PH. CH2 PH, isoleucine, CH, CH3, CH2, CH3, this is the alkyl group, cysteine, CH2, SH, methionine, CH2, CH3, SCH3. So in cysteine and methionine, you will have in the sulfur. In cysteine and methionine, you are having the respect to sulfur. Aspargine, you will be having the amide system, CH2, C double bond, NH2. Glutamine, CH2, CH2, C double bond, NH2. These are the alkyl groups. Tryptophan, CH2, and the cyclic ring, where lone pair of electrons are nitrogen. The lone pair of electron present on nitrogen, they were actually in resonance with the pi electron density, thereby decreasing the basic nature. And that is why it is not again classified into respect to basic amino acid. Serine, NH2, CH2, COH, CH2OH. If you look at cysteine, there you have SH group. Here in serine, you have OH group. Threonine, NH2, CH, CH, CH3, OH. This is the alkyl group. And tyrosine, you will be having CH2, C6, H4, OH. This is again the alkyl group. You may again argue like OH groups are there. Because of OH group, the acidic nature will be high. Only COH groups will be contributing, contributing more to the acidic nature when compared to phenolic OH as well as alcoholic OH. So these are these are these are the respective alpha amino acids. There are 20 alpha amino acids. These alpha amino acids which combine with each other to form to form a uh, they, are, they will be combined with each other to form a polypeptide. In the polypeptide, you will be having many peptide linkages. Many polypeptides will be present in a particular polymer. Many polypeptides will be present in a particular protein. Proteins are containing many polypeptides. How is a polypeptide obtained? It is a linear chain polymer of respect to alpha amino acids. Right? Right, students. Alpha amino acids. All natural alpha amino acids are L amino acids and optically active. They are all optically active except glycine. Except glycine, you are going to have all natural alpha amino acids are optically active and L amino acids, L is a configuration. That means with respect to the last one carbon, you can have L configuration, not the D. In aqua solution, alpha amino acids, they exist in the zitronic form or dipolar form. Where do you have seen the zitronic form earlier? Anywhere have you seen the zitronic form? Anyone remember? Whenever you're looking at the sulfonation of aniline, sulfonylic acid like NH2 and SO3H, they exist in the zitronic form. Just to go through that. Just a second.
Yes, in the aqua solution, alpha amino acids, they are existing as heterogenic forms. That means C double bond OH, the alkyl group are connected to carbon, CH bond is there, and C double bond OH will be forming C double bond O minus. That is lone pair of electron present on nitrogen that can pick up this proton. So nitrogen will now be having three NH bonds, and NH3 and nitrogen will have a positive charge. This is nothing but your zeta-ionic form. Okay. In proteins, alpha amino acids are connected to each other by peptide linkage. Peptide linkage means what? The acid and base reactions like uh, COH group react with NH2 to form C double bond NH. Like glycine, if you take NH2, CH2, C double bond OH and alanine, NH2, CH2, here we have a CH because already four bonds are done. NH2, CH, CH3, COH. Whenever glycine and alanine react, they will be forming respective peptide linkage like a glycyl alanine. How is this going to happen? So NH2, CH2, C double bond OH reacting with a NH2, CH, CH3, COH. So can I say lone pair of electron present on nitrogen, they can be attacking this particular carbon. Electrophilic carbon, the C double bond of pi electron density is moving away. As it is moving away, what is going to happen? You will be having NH2. CH2, carbon will have single bond with oxygen and negative charge on oxygen and OH group present as it is. Nitrogen will have two NH bonds as it is and nitrogen will be having a positive charge. Also, nitrogen is connected with the carbon CH group, CH, CH3, COH. The negatively charged oxygen now can pick up this proton or not? The negatively charged oxygen can now come into to form C double bond O, whereas this lone pair of electron, this oxygen, that will pick up the proton. Why? Because C double bond is a stronger bond. So lone pair of electrons and oxygen, if it if they pick up the proton, they will be forming what? They will be forming NH2, CH2, CO minus. Carbon will now has a connection with oxygen bond, and oxygen has two lone pairs. Now only one lone pair. And earlier also oxygen has one OH bond, now two OH bonds and a positive charge. Nitrogen regain its lone pair. Nitrogen will have one lone pair, NH bond, and CH, CH3, COOH. Negative charge on oxygen now comes into, and loss of H2 will occur. Negative charge on oxygen now comes into, loss of H2 will occur, forming NH2, CH2, C double bond O, NH, CH, CH3, COOH. This is nothing but the peptide linkage or amide linkage. Okay, peptide linkage. And Glycyl alanine is going to be formed because in alanine, in alanine only we have COH, which is the major group. Yes or no? The name is still alanine because in alanine we have COH group which is remaining. COH is the highest priority functional group, right? But the COH of glycine that has been reacting with NH2, that means it is lost and in, involved in the amide linkage. So the name has to be glycyl alanine, right? And this is how the peptide linkages are going to be formed. The peptide linkages also include a loss of simple water molecules. The same type of linkage you have seen earlier, glycosidic linkage, whenever two sugars are going to be linking with each other, whenever two sugars are going to be linking with each other, right? Amino acids are again classified into essential amino acids and non-essential amino acids. Essential means what? They Which should be taken through the food. Yes. Essential amino acids are those amino acids which are taken through food. Non-essential means? Present. Yes. They can be generated in the body, in the metabolic activities. The amino acids which cannot be synthesized in the body are called essential. That means we have to take them through diet. There are total 10 essential amino acids and they are given as this. Okay. Methionine, threonine, arginine, tryptophan, leucine, isoleucine. Valine, histidine, lysine, and phenylalanine. You can neglect whatever has been written in the bottom. Okay. So these are the 10 essential amino acids, and you can remember these 10 names. And the remaining other amino acids, they are going to be non-essential amino acids. Essential means they have to be taken through diet. That means they cannot be synthesized in the body. Non-essential means they will be synthesized in the body by the activities. Non-essential amino acids, the amino acids which can be synthesized in the body are said to be non-essential amino acids. Like the remaining all 10, glycine, alanine, glutamic acid, the remaining all 10 amino acids are said to be non-essential amino acids. 
Is everything clear, students, so far? Yes, sir. Yes, That's right. Sir. These are very basic points you can understand easily. Then comes the classification of proteins. Proteins are classified on the basis of molecular structure into two types: fibrous proteins as well as globular proteins. Fibrous proteins as well as globular proteins. What are fibrous proteins? Fibrous, by the name itself, you can understand it will be having some fiber-like structure. From the name itself, you can understand that fibrous proteins will be having some fiber-like structure. And you can look at the examples of that category, like uh, the polypeptide chains. They are going to be running parallel to each other in fibrous proteins. And examples you can look at keratin. Keratin, where you can have keratin. Keratin is mostly found in hair. Yes or no? Fiber, fibrous means those proteins will be having polypeptide chain because protein is nothing but containing many polypeptide chains. Proteins contain many polypeptide chains. Polypeptide is a linear polymer of alpha amino acids. When a polypeptide chains of amino acids lie side by side, they form a fiber-like structure and they are called as fibrous proteins. And they are going to be soluble in water or insoluble in water. The fibrous Insol protein. Why? Why are they insoluble in water? Because they could not develop intermolecular force of attraction with water easily because of the long alkyl chain whenever it is present. Along with the C double bond NH, we'll be having alkyl groups also, right? Because of that, they could not be developing electrostatic force of attraction or so new interaction with the water molecules and thus they are found to be insoluble in water. Whereas globular proteins, globular proteins, they are not like fiber-like scenario and they will be forming globules and they are going to be soluble in water because of the new intermolecular force of attraction developed. Fibrous protein and polypeptide chains of amino acids lie side by side. Then fiber-like structure is formed. And as I have told you, they are insoluble in water. Keratin, it is found in hair, wool, myosin, where it is found? Muscles. Muscles. Okay. These are some examples of fibrous proteins. If you go with the global proteins, polypeptide chains of amino acid fold to give a global structure. They are not running parallel now. Earlier in the polypeptide chain, like in the fibrous polypeptide chain, they are running parallel. Now they are folded to actually give a global structure. These are soluble in water as they can develop new interaction with water. As they can develop new interactions with water. Examples, insulin, albumin, these are some examples of globular proteins. So this was the, this was about the type of proteins and the different types of amino acids and all. Then we have to understand about the structure of proteins as well. The structure of protein is actually studied under different categories or different levels. The primary structure of protein, secondary structure of protein, tertiary structure of protein and quaternary structure of protein. The primary structure of protein gives idea the primary structure of protein gives idea regarding the sequence in which the amino acids have been linked. Primary structure gives the idea about the sequence in which the amino acids have been linked. So let us go with that. First one, first structure is primary structure. The primary structure of proteins refers to the sequence of amino acids held together by peptide bonds. The amino acids are linked, right? Like glycine, alanine, isoleucine, they have linked. After gly glycine and alanine linked, alanine and isoleucine linked. If I change the isoleucine to a different position, then that will be leading to a different protein. Okay. The primary structure of protein refers to the sequence of amino acids held together by peptide bonds, amide linkages. Any change in the sequence of amino acids creates a different protein because if the sequence of amino acids have been changed, then obviously the structure is different. The protein will also be different. The polypeptide itself is different. So this is a primary structure. They only talk about the sequence in which the amino acids have been linked. Secondary structure of protein, that will explain about the folding. Like whatever the primary structure we have written, like after glycine, we have alanine. After alanine, we have isoleucine. After isoleucine, we have valine. Like that, some sequence is there. But are they going to be in a straight chain? Never. Why? Because of the intermolecular force of attraction. 
there is van der Waal force of attraction there is hydrogen bonding there is a possibility of sulfide less sulfide linkages because of the intermolecular force of attraction between one group and the other group what happens is in the polypeptide chain only you will be having some helical structure the polypeptide will not be like a straight chain rather it will be helix that means in the one circle of the helix and the above circle of the helix whatever the two groups are there they are going to be developing hydrogen bonding or van der Waal force of attraction the secondary structure actually divided into two types alpha helical structure beta pleated structure in the alpha helical structure if you proceed first in the secondary structure of protein helix are formed by primary structures of protein the same primary structure of protein is forming helix like whatever the groups we have here what are these although we are uh, representing with different different colored circles they are all atoms only right they are all peptide linkages sequence in which the amino acids are linked ultimately we have atoms groups are there so whatever the groups present here and the groups on bottom they will be having intermolecular force of attractions or van der Waal forces because of those van der Waal forces this helical structure is going to be formed so between in the same polypeptide we are going to have intramolecular hydrogen bonding in the alpha helical structure of protein okay that point you have to understand alpha helical structure in alpha helix a polypeptide chain forms all possible hydrogen bonds by twisting into right handed screw here you are having what type of hydrogen bonding intramolecular or intermolecular intramolecular hydrogen bonding is major yes or no intramolecular like within the same polypeptide we are going to have the hydrogen bonding intramolecular hydrogen bonding and if you go to the beta pleated structure in the beta pleated structure what you are going to have is the polypeptide chains are stretched out to a maximum sub extension or a maximum distance then between one polypeptide chain and the other polypeptide chain the new hydrogen bonding is going to develop that is intermolecular hydrogen bonding okay the second structure is that is in the secondary structure we have two categories alpha structure alpha helical structure beta pleated structure in the alpha helical structure we have intramolecular hydrogen bonding which is obtained by the twisting the primary structure of respect to polypeptide or primary structure of protein secondary structure in that if you look at the beta pleated structure in a beta structure all the peptide chains are stretched out to a nearly maximum extension to a nearly maximum extension they are stretched out and then laid side by side which are held together by intermolecular hydrogen bonds which are held together like this is one maximum stretching and here we have some c double bond group this c double bond and here we have some nh this partial negatively charged oxygen and partial positively charged hydrogen they are developing intramolecular uh, intermolecular hydrogen bonding this intermolecular hydrogen bonding is developed between the two polypeptide chains which are stretched out by a maximum extension right that is nothing but your beta pleated structure we have primary structure which is obtained or which gives only information regarding the sequence in which the amino acids have been linked we have secondary structure where we have alpha helical structure and beta pleated structure and then we will be having tertiary structure how the tertiary structure can be obtained further folding of secondary structure gives tertiary structure because in the secondary structure we have just alpha helix or beta pleated but further folding of this will be representing the overall tertiary structure and this tertiary structure is actually classified into fibrous as well as globular proteins we have discussed right earlier fibrous proteins and global proteins they were coming under tertiary structures the tertiary structure of protein represents the overall folding of the peptide chains it gives rise to two molecular shapes like fibrous and globular okay it is obtained by further obtained by further folding of secondary structure secondary structure of protein and this can be giving the category of primary uh, uh, fibrous proteins as well as globular proteins fibrous means polypeptide chains slide side by side globular means they will be folded and quaternary structure of proteins means what the last structure some proteins will be having more than one polypeptides 
like two or more polypeptide different kinds they are called as subunits and the special arrangement of all these subunits with respect to each other that is called as quaternary structure that means further folding of a tertiary structure which contain more than one polypeptide like two or more polypeptide chains that will lead to quaternary structure okay quaternary structure means some of the proteins are composed of two or more polypeptide chains and they are called as subunits the special arrangement of these subunits with respect to each other that is called as quaternary structure that is called as quaternary structure is everything clear students regarding the structure of proteins yes sir yes yes, yes right. very good so let us proceed for the so primary structure of protein in the primary structure of protein you are having the sequence in which the amino acids have been linked and if you try to fold the primary structure you will be getting the respect to secondary structure you can have alpha helix as well as beta pectin this is nothing but your secondary structure of protein this is you can see alpha helix and beta pectin the secondary structure of protein if you try to fold further you will be generating the tertiary structure tertiary structure of protein and if you try to look at the quaternary structure the quaternary structure is actually obtained by different arrangement of subunits where we have more than two polypeptide chains and this ultimately gives the quaternary structure of protein this was the respective quaternary structure of protein you can look at this protein everywhere we have bonds linkages atoms very high number are there okay that is how the complex structures looks like right then comes the next category denaturation of proteins what do you mean by denaturation of proteins breaking of the bonds between yes like when a protein is subjected to some external change like the change in temperature or change in ph whatever the bonding we have the intermolecular force of attraction or intramolecular force of attraction that is going to be disturbed or not although the chemical bonds are not going to broken covalent bonds but the intermolecular forces can be easily broken intramolecular or intramolecular whenever you subject a protein to some external change the intramolecular attractions or intermolecular attractions can be easily broken because they are not so strong and thus what happens to the globules like the quaternary structure tertiary structure whatever structures we have or secondary structures all those are going to be disturbed or not because the alpha helix if you take beta pectin if you take those bonds are disturbed so every intermolecular attraction or intramolecular attraction that is going to be lost and you only only thing which is present still is the primary structure that means because of the change in external conditions like temperature or ph the hydrogen bondings are going to be disturbed due to this the structure of protein changes the secondary structure tertiary structure quaternary structure is going to be changed only primary structure will not be changed and because of this the biological activity will be disturbed this is nothing but denaturation the natural protein will be, will be having some activity that activity has been lost that is why it is called as denaturation the removal of its natural property okay when a protein is subjected to change in ph or temperature the hydrogen bonds are disturbed due to this globules unfold and helix gets uncoiled and the protein loses its biological activity this is called as denaturation of proteins during denaturation secondary and tertiary structure if quaternary structure is there that is also disturbed or destroyed but a primary structure they are not going to be affected because primary structure will have covalent bonds they are not going to be broken easily the coagulation of egg white on boiling is an example of denaturation like whenever you boil egg you will be getting an egg white right the coagulation of egg white but if you decrease the temperature that egg white will not be converting into general egg back that means it lost its property that is example of denaturation so when you try to do the change the quaternary to tertiary tertiary to secondary secondary to primary this will not change okay primary structure remains same the primary structure remains same that is nothing but your respective uh 
the concept in the denaturation of proteins right try to answer this which of the following molecules is capable of forming zetrion first option first option zetrion means acidic and basic group should be present in the molecule so option 1 is going to be right option amino acid which of the following statement is not correct proteins are polyamides formed from amino acids except glycine all other proteins uh, all other amino acids shows optical activity natural proteins are made up of l isomers of amino acids in alpha amino acids nh2 and coh are attached to different carbon atoms fourth option because nh2 and coh they are connected to same carbon atoms so that is going to be the respect to incorrect one right very good then comes the next concept enzymes what are enzymes students enzymes are biological catalysts which bring about chemical reactions in the living cells the biocatalysts enzymes are called as biocatalysts enzyme enzyme will be having a particular active site like if you to talk of any enzyme i will be drawing the structure geometrical figure i will say this was your enzyme and this is a substrate enzyme will hold the substrate at its active sites what is the role of enzyme how the enzymes are going to be work out what are the activities of enzyme students if you think of activities of enzyme enzyme will be doing two things the first thing what enzyme has to do is enzyme will be in a position enzyme has to be in a position to actually hold the substrate to form the complex which is nothing but enzyme substrate enzyme complex. complex this enzyme substrate complex whenever it is formed that enzyme should also provide the functional groups like in the enzyme only we should have some specific functional groups which can react with the substrate so that the enzyme substrate complex will be forming respect to product and enzyme is released back two things are going to happen the enzyme plus substrate will form a complex at a rate k1 the complex can also come back to enzyme and substrate so it is an equilibrium so k minus 1 and that complex can also be lead to the formation of product that is at a rate k2 rate constant k2 you may see that geometrical figures i have drawn here enzyme and substrate this uh, substrate is going and fitting here in reality are there any geometrical figures no sir no, there are sir. no geometrical figures there are only electrostatic force of attractions or van der waal attractions between the enzyme and substrate we will have good intramolecular force of attraction that is the point the, there are no such geometrical figures although we are writing figures here only for our understanding there are no such figures the enzyme is actually holding the substrate it is attracting the substrate the enzyme will attract the substrate to form the complex enzyme substrate complex and that complex will lead to the product releasing back the enzyme okay so enzyme has two roles one first role is to bind the bind the substrate second role provide functional groups for the substrate so that the substrate will react to form products enzyme has to bind the substrate and it has to provide the functional group for the substrate to form the respective products and this is done at a greater rate and that is why enzymes are called as biological catalysts which bring about chemical change in the living cells they are produced by living organisms and are usually present in only very small quantities like a very small quantity of enzyme can control or like one molecule of enzyme can convert 10 power 6 molecules like 1 million molecules of substrate enzymes are very specific for a particular reaction at a particular substrate if a particular enzyme is acting is catalyzing a particular reaction it won't be catalyzing any other reactions they are very specific and also for a very uh, specific substrate it can only convert only one type of substrate all enzymes are globular proteins all enzymes are actually globular proteins pepsin trypsin proteases etc these are some enzymes these are some enzymes the enzymatic activity is going to be happening greatly 
whenever the substrate has a tendency to bind to the enzyme greatly okay that is why the enzymes are going to be specific if a particular substrate uh, is not going and binding to a particular enzyme then that enzyme is not catalyzing its reaction whereas there will be a different kind of enzyme which can catalyze they are very specific in nature then comes the vitamins details about enzymes and enzymatic activity will discuss again in the surface chemistry catalysis enzyme catalysis vitamins the organic compounds required in diet in small amounts to perform specific biological functions for normal maintenance of optimum growth and health of organism that is said to be vitamins vitamins are required to perform the biological functions happening inside a body at a normal condition or a normal rate there are again different vitamins different categories like uh, water soluble vitamins fat soluble vitamins what are water soluble vitamins vitamin b and c and fat soluble or a d e k vitamin b and c are water soluble and vitamin a d e k are fat soluble vitamins and uh, you have to remember the names of all these respective vitamins as well as their deficiency causes what type of diseases and their sources will give a table to you you try to remember this with your own idea vitamin a chemical name is retinol and deficiency causes xerophthalmia that is hardening of cornea of the eye which will lead to night blindness as well vitamin b1 thiamine deficiency causes beriberi loss of appetite and retarded growth paralysis vitamin b2 riboflavin chelosis that is fissuring at corners of the mouth and lips vitamin b6 pyridoxine it will lead to the convulsions vitamin b12 cyanocobalamin pernicious anemia that is rbc deficiency red blood cell deficiency in the hemoglobin vitamin c ascorbic acid it will lead to the disease called scurvy vitamin d calciferol like rickets bone deformities in children and soft bones and joint pains in adults vitamin a tocopherol increased fragility of red blood cells and lead lead to muscular weakness vitamin k philoquinone increased blood clotting time and these are the respective sources like mostly they are found in all the vegetarian as well as non vegetarian substances okay if someone says to be a vegetarian or non vegetarian due to a deficiency of particular vitamin that is all false we never believe because we are getting all types in vegetarian meals as well as non vegetarian meals okay is that clear or not yes 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 right and again if you are you can neglect this if you don't know hindi and if you are good in hindi you can just go with this uh, shortcuts to remember okay nucleic acids then comes the next type of uh, biomolecule nucleic acid nucleic acids means what nucleic acids they are responsible for what type of actions the particle there are some specific particles in the nucleus of the cell which was responsible for heredity like you, you all see that we will be behaving in the same way as your ancestors yes or no we have some properties uh, uh, gained from the grandmother or grandfather or great grandfathers like that we behave so the particles which are actually responsible for these uh, heredity the particles inside the nucleus of the cell which are actually called as chromosomes those chromosomes will contain some proteins as well as nucleic acids proteins about proteins you have seen there are some particles in the nucleus of the cell which are responsible for heredity those are said to be chromosomes in the chromosomes will have proteins as well as nucleic acids now in this section we are going to understand about the nucleic acids nucleic acids are classified in two types ribonucleic acid and deoxyribonucleic acids dna and rna and what are nucleic acids what are polysaccharides they are polymers of monosaccharides what are proteins they have many polypeptides what is a polypeptide is a polymer of alpha amino acid 
what is a new what is a nucleic acid it is also a polymer of nucleotide so they are also called as polynucleotide in the nucleotide we have three units a sugar unit a base unit as well as a phosphate group right very good the particles in nucleus of the cell responsible for heredity what type of particles they are res responsible for heredity chromosomes in the chromosomes what do we have you will be having proteins and nucleic acids about proteins we have seen the primary structure secondary structure tertiary structure and all yes or no now we are going to look at the nucleic acids nucleic acids are actually classified into ribonucleic acid rna or deoxyribonucleic acid nucleic acids are long chain polymers of nucleo tides so they are also called as polynucleotides they are also called as polynucleotides three things are present in nucleotide protein a pentose sugar and a phosphate group in nucleoside what are going to present nucleoside nitrogen based sugar okay nucleotide means all the three nucleotides means you will be having a nitrogen base pentose sugar and a phosphate group in a nucleoside which will not be there in nucleoside phosphate. Phosphate. phosphate group will not be available phosphate group is not present but nucleic acids are polypeptides of nucleotides not nucleosides so nitrogen base pentose sugar phosphate group what type of nitrogen bases we have adenine purines pyrimidines purines and pyrimidines there are two types of nitrogen bases yes or no so purines adenine and guanine in the purine you have a and g and in the pyrimidine bases the structures you don't need to remember but just look at the functional groups like in guanine you have c double bond group that you should know c double bond where you have in the guanine you have in the adenine you have nh2 group only and pyrimidines purines and pyrimidines in the pyrimidine you have three bases cytosine thiamine and yes. uracil thiamine is present in dna whereas uracil is present in rna so in dna what are the bases possible dna purine bases adenine guanine thiamine and cytosine cytosine and thiamine and what type of linkage you can have adenine can link with thiamine at and G guanine can be linked with the cytosine and in rna you have what type of rna we have what type of bases adenine guanine cytosine uracil adenine guanine cytosine uracil okay you may ask a question sir how do you know how can you say that thiamine is present in dna but not in rna we are not saying it we are understanding the structure how it is present by doing the characterization and all okay i am not saying that uh, thiamine is present in dna it is actually absorbed in such a way and what makes it present in dna is the electrostatic force of attraction that they are actually stabilizing it we are understanding in dna what are the molecules present okay and how they are stabilized and what type of intermolecular force of attraction are there right pentose sugar you have deoxy ribose that will be present in dna and ribose that will be present in rna deoxy ribose and ribose if you look at the difference that is the what type of pentose sugar we have that is ribose and in that ribose like uh, the deoxygenation happened at which carbon in the deoxy ribose beta it is a beta or alpha beta d ribose beta d ribose beta d 2 deoxy ribose it is a beta because on the first carbon you have oh group on the top that is left means up on the first carbon oh should be up that means it is left side means it should be beta it is a d it has d configuration it is ribose beta d ribose and beta d 2 deoxy ribose on the second carbon you have deoxygenation happen that means you have only hydrogen groups so these are the two different types of uh, 
uh, sugars present like in dna we have deoxyribose in rna we have ribose and the structure of nucleic acid means you have nucleotide the base will be linking with the sugar pentose sugar and the pentose sugar will be linking with the phosphate group what type of linking is going to be present between like which base will link to which carbon atom of the sugar if you want to look at the nucleotide nucleic acids are chains of five membered ring structures linked by phosphate groups and nitrogen bases let, let us take a sugar any pentose sugar i have taken this is first carbon second third fourth and to the fourth carbon you have ch2oh that is the fifth this was your sugar right this was your sugar ch2oh and i'm not specifying the configurations are second and third so it can be dna or rna where do you have the linkage of a base with the sugar unit which carbon first carbon first carbon, first carbon. so base is going to be nitrogen base is going to be connected to the first carbon and which carbon is going to be connecting to the phosphate group fifth carbon fifth, fifth carbon. carbon so we have oxygen connected to p o p o p o minus this oxygen again is linked to other units this oxygen again linked to other units so like that this is a typical nucleotide this is one nucleotide yes or no in the nucleotide the base is actually linked to the first carbon of the respective pentose sugar and the phosphate group is actually present at the fifth carbon of the respective sugar this is one nucleotide but what is nucleic acid nucleic acids are polynucleotides that means one nucleic acid and the other nucleic acid they have what type of linkages this is one nucleotide yes or no this is one nucleotide nucleotides nucleotide like polynucleotide is nothing but your nucleic acid polynucleotide means what polynucleotide means many nucleotides should link with each other the one nucleotide and the other nucleotide they are going to be linking through phosphodiester linkage and through which carbon the linkage is going to happen third carbon and fifth carbon okay the two nucleotides the new two nucleotides will be linked with each other through phosphodiester linkage and it is 3 to 5 linkage okay the third carbon of one nucleotide links with the fifth carbon of the other linkage and that linkage will be a phosphodiester linkage and that linkage will be ultimately leading to the formation of respective nucleic acids that linkage will be leading to the formation of respective nucleic acids okay nucleic acids are chains of five membered ring sugars linked by phosphate groups and nitrogenous bases nitrogen base is linked on the first carbon phosphate group is the fifth carbon and that is a nucleotide one nucleotide and the other nucleotide they will be linking through phosphodiester linkages to form the respective nucleic acids polynucleotides look at the deoxyribonucleic acid deoxy means here you should have hydrogen on the second carbon deoxyribonucleic acid the base is actually cytosine cytosine can be present phosphate link this is one nucleotide deoxyribonucleotide and what is ribonucleotide the ribose base and in the ribose do we have thymine no sir no, no sir. so this should not be there here here any base okay any base other than thymine like any purine or pyrimidine base other than thymine should be present so base should be linked with the sugar it is a ribose sugar and phosphate linkage as it is here base cytosine is present in dna along with that you have sugar or uh, in the sugar you will be having respect to deoxyribose means on the second carbon you should not have oh group so hydrogen and the phosphate linkage 
these are the general structures of your respective nucleic acids these are the structures of your respective nucleic acids the polynucleotide this is just a nucleotides deoxyribonucleic nucleotide ribonucleotide whenever the nucleotides have been linked they are going to be linked in such a way such that you will be seeing the phosphodiester linkages that linkage will be three phi linkage that linkage will be three phi linkage clear and then comes the category of double strand helical structure of dna dna means deoxyribonucleic acid it will have a double stranded structure like a primary structure gives what like in the same as your proteins the primary structure of protein give information regarding the sequence in which the amino acids have been linked similarly the primary structure here in the nucleotide also gives the sequence in which the nucleotides have been linked primary structure of dna primary structure of dna gives information gives information about the sequence of amino acids uh, sequence of nucleotides linked and in the secondary structure to explain the secondary structure the secondary structure of dna was actually given by watson and crick scientists and in the double stranded structure of dna there are two polynucleotides like this is one polynucleotide and this was the other polynucleotide the two polynucleotides they are going to present in this in this uh, fashion and between one polynucleotide and the other polynucleotide whatever the bases we have right those bases will be developing intermolecular force of attraction that is hydrogen bondings and between what type of bases you are going to have hydrogen bonding adenine and thymine atgc guanine and cytosine in dna okay rna is a single stranded structure and its polynucleotide can fold back within itself but dna secondary structure is a double strand structure so now i don't know the point this is a double strand structure of dna secondary structure rna is a single strand structure and its rna is a single strand structure and its polynucleotide can fold back within itself okay and the in the dna we will be having adenine forming two hydrogen bondings with thymine and guanine form three hydrogen bondings with the cytosine and that was the respect to double strand structure of dna you can look at this structure so this was the dna second structure double stranded adenine and thymine if you look carefully there are two hydrogen bondings guanine and cytosine if you look carefully there are three hydrogen bondings and because of these hydrogen bondings only these two double stranders are actually having the stability okay they are present in that manner because of this double stranded structure only is that clear students Yes, sir. That's right. Yes. Then comes the next concept: hormones. Hormones are the secretions of endocrine glands, and they are normally derived from amino acids, peptides, proteins, and steroids. The mode of action of enzymes and hormones is similar. How the enzyme is going to act? Enzyme will be binding the substrate first. It provides the functional groups for the substrate to react. Same in the similar fashion, hormones are going to be having the reaction. The mode of action of uh, hormones is also similar. They are produced in very small amounts and regulate vital body functions. And the hormones are molecules that act as intercellular messengers. And the details about hormones, like what type of hormones are there and how are they going to be linked with each other, that is all not there in your twelfth standard. So the major new biomolecules which you should be focusing on greatly is nucleic acids. proteins as well as biomolecules along with that you have to study whatever is there in your syllabus for the like the rest 
enzymes, hormones as well as vitamins. Vitamins, you have to remember the names and all. And the enzymes and hormones, their activity is going to be similar and they are produced in very, very smaller quantities. Try to solve these examples. Chemical name of vitamin K is? Philoquinone. Philoquinone. Disease caused by lack of vitamin, vitamin C. Scurvy. 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 Okay. So, these type of questions you can expect from biomolecules. So, for just a second, we'll start with the new chapter named polymers. What are polymer students? Like so far, whatever we have discussed, those are all categorized into polymers or not? Like polysaccharides. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Nucleic acids, proteins. So in those, we have automatically seen the different kinds of polymers. Polymers are obtained by interlinking yeah. of many monomer units. Right, many monomers, whenever they combine, they will be forming respect to polymer. Based on the type of monomers, we can be classifying what kind of polymer it is. This chapter, named as polymers, we will mainly focus on what type of reactions are going to be there and different types of polymerizations, classifications, and all. And we cannot imagine our life without polymers. Look at look around yourself. We are surrounded by a lot of polymers. The buckets, the mugs, yes or no water bottles, every day, whatever you are using, they are all coming under some kind of polymer. So polymers of high molecular mass molecules or macromolecules, which are formed by combination of large number of repeating lower molecular mass molecules, which are nothing but monomers. The monomers, they are going to be combined with each other to form respective polymers. The monomers, they are going to be linking with each other to form the respective polymers. Based on the monomers, we can be having a different kinds of polymers. In polymers, monomers are joined together by covalent bonds. And the polymerization can be of two types, addition polymerization or condensation polymerization. Addition polymerization do not involve loss of simple molecules, whereas condensation polymerization involves a loss of simple molecules like water, alcohol, etc. We will be discussing separate categories like addition polymers, condensation polymers, biodegradable polymers, and all the examples and their mechanistic approaches. Like all these are polymers, like tires, plastics, yes or no, whatever you are going to use in your day-to-day -day lives, all these are polymers, utensils and all. Classification based on source. First, you have to classify based on the source, like uh, natural polymers, artificial polymers, like synthetic and semi-synthetic also. Like derivatives of natural, you can have semi-synthetic polymers. Natural polymer means like a natural rubber, you can take an example, found in plants and animals. Proteins, cellulose, starch, these are some examples given here. Natural rubber is also an example. You can have semi-synthetic polymers. Semi-synthetic polymers are derivatives of natural polymers. Example, cellulose acetate or rayon, cellulose nitrate, Semi-synthetic polymers are, they are derivatives of natural polymer. From the natural polymer, like from the cellulose, we can have the cellulose acetate formation, which is also called as rayons. Cellulose nitrate, these are all semi-synthetic polymers. Semi-synthetic uh, polymer means they are completely 
man-made polymers like man-made polymers you can look at plastic polythene buna ash nylon 6,6 .6. these are all the examples of respect to synthetic polymers is that clear yes yes that's right so you all should be very active because we are studying this uh, easy concepts after studying lot of complex uh, organic reactions okay and then we have the classification based upon structure how to classify polymers based on structure first one is linear polymers linear polymers consist of long and straight chains linear polymers will be having long and straight chains that means can i say in linear polymers yes or no in the linear polymers we will be having long and straight chains means can i say the linking between one linear chain that is one polymeric chain and the other polymeric chain is almost zero that is no branching is there no linkaging is there since uh, one polymeric chain and the other polymeric chain they are very close can i say they will be having higher densities linear polymers look at the structure these are the linear polymers this is one polymeric chain this is other polymer chain they are all chains that means they are they have lot of atoms in between different different functional groups have been reacting that is how you get the chain those chains have no interlinking so they are no branching no branching means they are very closely packed because of close packing their density will be high melting points will be high tensile strength all those are going to be high structure is close packed high density is melting point tensile strength example you can take hdp high density polythene polyvinyl chloride these are some examples of respect to linear polymers right students next category based upon structure i can say after linear polymers we can also have branched chain polymers branched chain polymers after that we can have cross linked polymers branched chain polymers means you will be having some linkages between the two polymeric chain cross linked means the number of branching will be very very high yes or no so let us go with the branched chain polymers these polymers contain linear chains having some branches there are some branches for the linear chains and this for this is how the structure of branched chain polymer looks like branched chain polymers have low melting points low densities and low tensile strength as compared to linear polymers why because they have branching at specific points and they are not very closely packed since they are not very closely packed they will be not having the higher density so the example coming under this category is low density polythene the example coming coming under this category is low density polythene we also have cross linked polymers what are cross linked polymers cross linked or three dimensional network polymers that means here the branching will be very high one polymeric chain and the other polymeric chain they are linked everywhere almost because of these linkages they will be having they are these polymers are hard yes sir because the linkages are there they are not going to be easily broken they are also hard in this polymer the initially formed linear polymeric chains are joined together by 3d network structure the 3d network structure is going to be in this fashion because of that network structure they are going to be hard these polymers contain strong covalent bonds between various linear polymer chains and these are hard brittle and rigid cross linked polymers are condensation polymers condensation polymers means obtained by or condensation polymerization includes polymerization includes loss of simple molecules okay condensation polymerization includes loss of simple molecules and resins are cross linked polymers you will have different resins like we will be understanding about bakelite phenol formaldehyde melamine formaldehyde urea formaldehyde resins we will study about those condensation polymers and they will be coming under these examples urea formaldehyde resin phenol formaldehyde resin we will understand how these resin are actually formed 
phenol and formaldehyde they are going to be reacting there was an electrophilic substitution happening with respect to phenol phenol is an electron donating group it is ortho para directing so ortho position is going to be substituted with ch2h that ch2h at the ortho position is linked with the other monomer to form a linear chain those linear chain will linked in the 3d structure to form bakelite that is how we generate the cross linking polymers right classification based on mode of polymerization how the classification is then based on uh, made on a structure based on source natural synthetic semi synthetic based on structure linear branched cross linked based on mode of polymerization addition polymerization and uh, condensation polymerization addition polymerization will happen only whenever the monomers are having the double bonds like uh, unsaturated hydrocarbons condensation polymerization will be happen whenever the monomers have functional groups polymers they have been classified the classified based on the mode of polymerization that is addition polymerization as well as condensation polymerization and the polymers obtained by addition polymerization they are called as addition polymers polymers obtained by condensation polymerization they are called as condensation polymers addition polymerization is also called as chain growth polymerization or chain growth polymers condensation polymerization they are also called as step growth polymerization or step growth polymers right addition polymer or chain growth polymers to show addition polymerization monomer molecule should have double or triple bond that is unsaturated unsaturated hydrocarbons to show addition polymerization monomer molecule should have double or triple bond unsaturated hydrocarbons should be present addition polymers are either linear polymers or branch chain polymers and the mechanistic approach for the addition polymerization is assumed to be in three fashions like free radical mechanism cationic polymerization anionic polymerization out of all these three again free radical path is the most widely accepted path mechanism of addition polymerization cationic mechanism anionic mechanism and free radical mechanism out of all these again the radical mechanism is accepted mostly and that was studied free radical polymerization what happens in free radical polymerization that is in the case of addition polymers first to initiate the reaction chain initiators are required like peroxides okay to initiate the polymerization to initiate the polymerization chain initiators are required like benzoyl peroxides or acetyl peroxide okay benzoyl peroxide or acetyl peroxide they are going to be required they are useful for the chain initiation reaction if you look at the ph c double bond o o o c double bond o ph whenever you treat this with sunlight what happens the oxygen oxygen bond is going to be cleaved and you will be generating ph c double bond o o dot ph c double bond o o dot is obtained this ph c double bond o o dot that will be leading to the formation of like the phenyl group and the carbon will have one bond where two electrons are there this bond is now going to be cleaved homolytically to form what respect to ph dot and you along with that you will be generating c dot c double bond o c o dot that means you will generate carbon dioxide the phenyl radical is formed along with the release of carbon dioxide this phenyl radical will be reacting with the so monomer like an unsaturated hydrocarbon like alkene or alkyne to form the respect to higher free radical that means this ph dot form here we have taken the benzoyl peroxide that will be reacting in the presence of sunlight to form ph c double bond o dot that will undergo loss of co2 to form ph dot this ph dot will react with alkene like ch2 double bond ch2 how i can treat that ch2 double bond ch2 the pi electron density i can assume as one electron to each carbon 
so ph will be reacting with one carbon so ph dot will be connected to one carbon and the other carbon will have ch2 dot so ph dot react with the alkene like ch2 double bond ch2 have taken the simplest alkene to form ph ch2 ch2 dot so this is the initiation step this is nothing but your chain initiation step chain propagation what happens this ph ch2 ch2 dot will be reacting with other molecules to form bigger free radicals like that the much bigger free radicals are going to be formed in the chain propagation step chain termination the bigger free radicals which are formed in the chain uh, propagation they will combine to form a polymer that is nothing but your chain termination step ph c double bond o o o c double bond o ph this oxygen oxygen bond cleaved because of repulsions between the lone pair of electron that is unstable it can be cleaved easily to form respect to free radical ph c double bond o dot will now undergo loss of co2 to increase the entropy of the system forming phenyl radical and co2 this phenyl radical will react with the alkene system or alkyne system to form the respect to higher free radical is that clear students yes sir Yes. Now this higher free radical P H C H two C H two dot that will react with another molecule. Like in the propagation, what happens? P H C H two C H two dot will react with another C H two double bond C H two. Again, you can have homolytic cleavage. It will form P H C H two C H two C H two C H two dot. Can I say this group is going to be repeated? So ultimately, in the propagation, this happens in propagation. In the propagation, you will be getting P H. CH2 CH2 taken n times, you will get CH2 CH2 dot. This is the final stage, like largest free radical obtained in the propagation. Two such a large free radicals will combine in the termination step. Chain propagation, you will have this PH CH2 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 dot. Again, reacting with one more molecule like that. If you repeat, you will generate PH CH2 CH2 taken n CH2 CH2 dot. PH CH2 CH2 taken in CH2 CH2 dot PH CH2 CH2 taken in CH2 CH2 dot they both will react now to form a larger free radical a larger polymer. This is nothing but your respect to polymer form in the chain termination step. And this was the mechanistic approach. Okay, PH CH2 CH2 taken in. CH2, 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 CH2 taken in pH. That is how it is obtained long polymeric chain. This is the addition mechanistic approach. The addition mechanistic approach has been explained based on free radical path. Although cationic mechanism and anionic mechanism are also there, free radical mechanism is widely accepted. Let us look at different addition polymers. Polymer. If you take polythene, homopolymer means what students? Homopolymer, copolymer. What is homopolymer? Same polymeric unit. Same polymeric unit or monomeric unit? Monomeric unit. Monomeric unit, right? When we have only one type of monomer, it is said to be. It is said to be homopolymer. When we have two types of monomeric units, it is said to be copolymer. Copolymer, buna S, one comma the beta diene and styrene, buna N. One comma the beta in acryl nitrile, they are respect to copolymers. Okay, let us look at the polythene is a homo homopolymer, which where the monomeric unit is ethene. The ethene when it is combined, what type of linkage you are going to have? CH2 CH2 taken n times you are going to have. Polythene, it is nothing but your respect to polythene. Poly tetrafluoroethene, which is also nothing but Teflon. Poly tetrafluoroethene. Eth ethene means what? CH2 double bond CH2. Poly tetrafluoro. Four fluorines are there. So CF2 double bond CF2. You can write CF2 double bond CF2. Poly tetrafluoro means these are these two carbons are linked now. CF2 single bond CF2 taken in. That is nothing but your poly tetrafluoroethene, which is nothing but Teflon. Teflon is also a homopolymer, and Teflon is stable. Under cooking temperatures or not? Yes, sir. Okay. Whatever the non-stick pans you are having, they are Teflon coated. It is stable under that particular temperature, cooking temperature. But if you have very high temperature, it will again melt down. 
whenever the cooking you are doing in the non-stick pans, you have to, you can do it in a normal homes, but if the temperature is very, very high, in that case, the melting of Teflon will occur, so which is again dangerous. So that is why some people even advise you to not use the non-stick pans at all. CF2, CF2 taken in, this is nothing but your Teflon. Polyacrylonitrile, PAN or Arlon, it is also a homopolymer. So what is the respect to monomer here? CH2 double bond, CHCN. So they are going to be linked, the pi electron NC is going to be linked. So it is, these are connected, this is repeated n times. That is nothing but your CF, CH2, CHCN, n times. That is nothing but your respect to polymeric units. Next, uh, polystyrene, polystyrene. What is the monomer respect to monomer? Styrene. Polystyrene means styrene is the respect to monomer. CH2 double bond CHPH. It is nothing but styrene. It is repeated n times. Means that will be the polymeric unit. And now the pi electron NC is actually lost. So we are having a single bond. CH2 single bond CH repeated n times pH. Polyvinyl chloride PVC. What is polyvinyl chloride? So vinyl chloride. What is vinyl chloride? That vinyl chloride is repeated many times. Vinyl chloride means CH2 double bond CHCl. One of the vinylic carbon is connected with chlorine. That is repeated n times means pi electron NC is lost and you will be having the single bonding. So this is going to be repeated n times. Connection is going to be present in this fashion. That is the respect to polymeric unit. Polypropene. It is also homopolymer. Whatever the polymers I am giving here, addition polymers, they are all addition polymers. You can look at the monomers. In the monomers, you have the unsaturated hydrocarbons or not. In all the set of polymers I am giving, you have the unsaturated hydrocarbons as monomers, right? Yes. Polypropene, CH, like propene you have CH2 double bond CH, CH3. It is again repeated n times. So to generate the polymeric unit. CH2, CH, CH3 taken n times. That is nothing but your respect to polymeric unit. And you can also have other polymers like rubber, natural rubber, neoprene and uh, natural rubber is isoprene, polyisoprene. Like uh, the monomeric unit present in natural rubber is isoprene and uh, in the artificial rubber or synthetic rubber, you will be having chloroprene. And the natural rubber will be forming the cis 1,4 polyisoprene. Isoprene means 2 methyl 1,3 betadine. 1,3 betadine 2 methyl. Understand this point carefully. Betadine CH2 double bond CH. CH double bond CH2. On the second carbon, you have methyl group. Yes or no? And now, if you look carefully, this terminal carbon is going to be connected. That means uh, this pi electron density, one electron given to this carbon, other electron given to this carbon. This pi electron density, one electron given to this carbon, other electron given to this carbon. Look at these two carbons now. The C2 and C3. This is first carbon, second carbon, third carbon, fourth carbon. The first carbon is involved in the polymeric chain, polymeric linkage. You have CH2. That uh, free electron is involved. The second electron has CH3 connection. Second and third electron will have a single bond or double bond now? Double bond. Double bond because one free radical electron present on C2 and the other radical electron present on C3, they form double bond. And the C4 will again have connection. This is nothing but your cis 1,4 uh, polyisoprene. 1,4 carbons, they are involving the polymeric linkage and you are having isoprene as a monomer. So cis cis type of configuration is present for the natural rubber. Cis 1,4 polyisoprene, that is nothing but your natural rubber. Okay, this is the polymeric unit. CH2, CCH3, double bond CH, CH2 taken in. That will be the respect to polymeric unit. Neoprene, neoprene, neoprene is a synthetic rubber. It is also homopolymer. It is also nothing but polychloroprene. What is polychloroprene? What is chloroprene first of all? Instead of a methyl group, if you have chloro group on the second carbon, like 2 chloro 1 comma 3 butadiene, 2 chloro 1 comma 3 butadiene, that is nothing but your chloroprene. If you try to understand the linkage, again, this terminal carbons are going to be connected in the polymeric chain. Double bonds are going to be now present between C2 and C3. Here you are getting a double bond. 
CH2 C double bond CH taken C uh, CH2 taken N and second carbon has a carbon chlorine bond. This is nothing but your respect to neoprene. Is that clear, students? Yes, sir. Yes. Right. We have to remember these monomeric monomers present in different types of polymers and all. Next to bunyas. Earlier I have told it is a copolymer. Bunyas and bunyar. Bunyas will have what type of monomeric units? Copolymer means two type of monomers are present. One comma the beta diene and styrene. CH two double one CH CH double one CH two linked with the CH2 double bond CHPH. If you blow with the linkage, this uh, CH2 CH double CH2 double bond CH CH double bond CH2 plus CH2 double bond CHPH. If you go with the linkage, this terminal carbon is going to be linked with the other. This terminal is linked with this carbon. You are getting the carbon double double bond position has been shifted. CH2 CH Double bond CH CH2 is connected with CH2. CH is again repeated n times and a pH. Some people gets confused. They will be connecting this carbon with the, this carbon, where the pH position is going to be placed here. Then that is wrong. That is not the polymer form. CH2 single bond CH double bond CH CH2 CH2 CH pH taken n times. This is nothing but your respect to bunyas, which is a copolymer of which is a copolymer of 1 comma 3 beta diene and styrene okay yeah similar meaning they have why they okay but generally copolymers were in use copolymer name is more in use buna n is also a copolymer where you have two different types of monomers 1 comma 3 beta diene and acrylonitrile acrylonitrile whenever you have used you have generated pan also so here you have CH2 double bond CHCN. Again, when you are trying to look at the polymer form, the CN is going to be present on the terminal carbon. CH2 CH double bond CH CH2 CH CHCN taken in. This is nothing but the respect to polymeric unit. Right. These are all the different different examples of addition polymers. If you go with the next concept, vulcanization of rubber. So if you look at rubber, the natural rubber natural rubber is going to be very soft or it will become soft at the temperature high temperature it has a high absorption capacity towards water it will absorb water greatly and it is soluble in non-polar solvents why because rubber is non-polar in nature unsaturated hydrocarbon non-polar solvents in the non-polar solvents non-polar solutes can dissolve and it is not resistant by any at, uh, by, by any oxidizing agents. Like there are different properties. Like uh, rubber becomes soft at high temperature. It has high water absorption capacity. It is soluble in non-polar solvents. Because of this, its usage has been reduced or not. The rubber, if you want to use, that usage has been reduced because of all these properties of rubber. So what we are going to do this is, we are going to control these activities by doing or by involving some linkages in rubber that is nothing but vulcanization of rubber because of vulcanization what happens the elastic property of rubber will be decreased because sulfur forms cross links in vulcanization sulfur forms cross links at the reactive sites of double bond and thus rubber gets stiffened like in tire rubber like rubber in the tire rubber we'll use five percent sulfur because whatever the polymeric unit you have we have CH2, CH, CH3, CH2, C, CH3, double bond CH, CH2 taken n times. This is the polymeric unit, right? Here we have one more double bond. The double bond you can involve in the cross linking with sulfur with the other unit. Yes or no? The double bond you can involve in the cross linking with sulfur with the other unit. Whenever you add sulfur and heat it, you are going to have cross linking formed and this pi electron density present between C2, C3 that is lost. Because of this cross links, the stiffness of rubber is going to be increased, the elasticity is decreased. In the tire rubber, we will generally add 5% of rubber. Because of this vulcanization, its usage has been wide now. 
need of alkanization natural rubber becomes soft at high temperature and brittle at low temperatures natural rubber show high water absorption capacity it is soluble in non polar solvents because like dissolves in like like dissolves in like and non resistant to attack by oxidizing agents but if you take the benefits of alkanization of rubber it has wide useful temperature range that means minus 40 degrees to 100 degrees celsius low water absorption capacity high resistance to oxidation and it is resistant to organic solvents such as petrol benzene ccl4 and fats and oils if you do the alkanization rubber will be having these properties because of these properties its a usage has been widened its usage has been increased or widened and that is the importance of vulcanization of rubber try to uh, solve this example which is the monomer of neoprene in the following third option neoprene fourth option neoprene means neoprene means respect to synthetic rubber polychloroprene so option 4 that will be a respect to right option which of the following are monomers of natural rubber and neoprene respectively isoprene is natural like isoprene is a monomer in natural rubber chloroprene is a monomer in uh, synthetic rubber synthetic rubber is neoprene First option. First option. First option is going to be the respect to right option. Yes or no? Two methyl one comma three butadiene and two chloro one comma three butadiene. They are the respect to examples or respect to monomers present in the natural rubber as well as the synthetic rubber. Right, friends. So then come the next category, condensation polymers. I think we'll discuss uh, or we'll start with this condensation polymers like polyesters, polyamides. What type of linkage in the next class? Here, what happens is here there will be loss of some simple molecules happening. Earlier we do not have loss. Why? Because the pi electron density is rare, right? That pi bond is cleaved and you have the addition happening. So there was no loss of simple molecules. But here the reaction, chemical reaction between the functional groups like uh, the carboxylic acids and uh, amine groups alcohols and carboxylic acid they will react and they will ultimately lead to the formation of polymers with a loss of simple molecules like water or alcohol right that will be all coming under the category of condensation polymers we'll discuss about the details in the next class fine thank you all everyone bye thank you sir thank you sir